Chip Kelly named the Eagles new head coach January 16th and since then every Eagles beat writer every Eagles fan has tried and failed to figure out the inner workings of the mind of the former Oregon head coach. We scour the earth for someone anyone who can tell us what Chip Kelly's all about and today we have our man Mark Saltbite who recently released a book called The Tao of Chip Kelly joins us to deliver the gospel according to Chip. And here he is with John Gonzalez, Mark Saltfight. There you go. Give me that book. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for having me on. Thank you for being also appearing at Helium Comedy Club tonight and Wednesday night. Also a comedian. That's right. Um, although we're completely un unrelated. I'm not doing Eagles jokes. I don't do a Chip Kelly. Imitation. You don't do anything. No. Nothing you like that. You're gonna have to phase that in for this crowd. Yeah. Well, you got the guy in town uh, who does the sports imitations. Um, Joe Conklin. Joe Conklin, right. yeah, there, I met him there, this morning. Yeah, great. Right. He's got it wired. I'm not going to compete with him. Now yeah. you, it's his turf. So you write for fishduck.com. That's right. Important. So Cover the Eagles. This is mm -hmm. the first time they've ever covered anybody outside of Oregon. But obviously, Chip Kelly coming here, there's a lot of fascinated people in Portland who want to see what he does. And you covered him during his career yeah. at Oregon, yeah. obviously. So so then go by the, the, uh, the title of the book, uh, or the subhead, I guess, Lessons from America's Most Successful Coach. Right. What's the book about? Uh, well, Chip Kelly, one of his gifts, and especially at Oregon, was he boiled down a lot of really innovative new concepts into short catchphrases, like win the day, the faceless opponent, every game is a Super Bowl. And so the book is structured around those sayings. Each one of the chapters is one of those sayings, and then illustrating examples from games, how it worked out. What's unique about it? So, so they're life lessons as, as they pretty much are. They're really, it, it's really about ways to mold people into a team that could apply to a business as much as to a football team. But mm -hmm. luckily, it helps you win games. Too. The, the one that I was interested in. So they're all, all, all the chapters are based on sayings by Chip Kelly. There's right? a few in the end. There's okay, like so, a, a couple about him, like Big Balls Chip and one about right, his humor. But, and but stuff, all but, yeah. of those are. But uh, the 29 so, of the 33. So as yeah. you know, because you cover the Eagles now, the the quarterback situation is something oh, yeah. that people are very interested in. Chapter nine, I believe, why yeah. quarterbacks are, am I getting this right? What, quarterbacks are like tea bags? Right, you gotta you put them in hot water one? to see, uh, see what you got. That's actually an old Eleanor Roosevelt line right. about women that he stole, but I think that's exactly the thing. Like, uh, Vic's going, we want to uh, know now who's gonna be the quarterback, and Chip Kelly's like, based on what? I haven't even seen you wear a pad. Right. You know, how am I gonna make a decision? One of his things, it's very much live in the moment. What do you got right now? Maybe you did great things in the past. That doesn't matter. Who can move this team? And uh, part of his approach is to run as many plays as possible in practice. So he's gonna run literally thousands of plays between now and the start of the season. By that time, all quarterback candidates will have had an opportunity. Everyone should see who can who works. Yeah. The, the other thing I, I love, one of his other sayings, and I don't know if it's in this book, but he said it when he was named New Eagles head coach. He said, the big time is where you're at. Yeah, and, and absolutely. And six years ago, he was at New Hampshire. Making $62,000 a year, and so, he was happy as a clam. So how does he do it? How did he get to Oregon and then now in the NFL? By not worrying about what the next step is. You know, that's like when he has a saying, like, every game is a Super Bowl. One reason Oregon had a great record record is they were never tripped up by the small games that people forget about it because you've got Alabama coming up on the schedule, that sort of thing. Same thing when he's coaching. He went through everything into coaching New Hampshire. When he was an assistant making no money, he paid his own way to go around the country and study other spread offenses and can, can, you know pair notes with people. He's just always learning the game. He's just like, He's just, he's truly a just student of the game. Absolutely. You, you've obviously spent more time around him than, than we have, even though you know we've seen him recently at yeah. many camps and OTAs. So explain to people why you think he'll be successful where maybe other college coaches have failed. Because right. uh, you know, we, we're calling him, or you're calling him here, the most successful coach in Nick uh, Saban might disagree, but I'm basing right. it on what he had to start with. If, okay. if Chip Kelly traded rosters with Nick Saban, he would have had four national championships over wow. the last four years. I so think. Nick Saban's a slacker is what you're saying. Well, it's what you start with. He's a lot right? to be that designed. Guy, I mean, yeah. What did he do for anybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, so when you look at his offensive concepts, yeah. tell us how, you know, one, how they succeed, and two, how they'll succeed in the NFL. Well, one, one thing important to realize is they're going to change. He's not going to run what he runs at Oregon, and that's why I think he's going to succeed. He's not one of these guys who is, I've figured everything out, you have to follow my book, everybody march to my beat. That's, that's part of his being a student of the game. He knows it's different in the NFL. He's got a network of people 
uh, like uh, the guy at Penn State was O'Brien, who was yeah, an assistant. Yeah, yeah, who's a good buddy of his, who spent a lot of time as an assistant in the NFL. He's working those people. He was asking Belichick. You can be sure when Belichick was asking him about no huddle, he was asking him stuff too. So he's going to adapt. He's going to change, and if stuff doesn't work, he'll change it again. What, what about in terms of how he manages people and personnel? Because we've seen right. like some, some little flare-ups, not necessarily major issues, but some things that, that might be considered um, – uh, maintenance and management issues. We've right. seen Michael Vick speak out about how he'd rather have a quarterback named now. Deshaun sure. Jackson did the same thing. Jason right. Peters got into a little dust up with the law right. because he was driving too fast. Right. These types of things were Kerry Williams who hadn't come to, to camp. So what, right. what is his philosophy on dealing with Sconces. those things? That move? Uh, the Sconces. Sconces. Yeah. Like things that might otherwise create controversy. Right, right. Uh, at Oregon, he was a pretty strict disciplinarian. He kicked a couple people off the team who were re- like Cliff Harris. I don't know if you know that guy. He was like an All-American cornerback, lockdown corner, punch punt returner. No, different guy. That was LeGarrette Blanc. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he punched suspended the him, yeah. right. let him come back. But that was an interesting situation. He, he lost his first game at Oregon. So there was an adjustment period. Everyone was kind of surprised. Not because they lost, but they didn't even get a first down in the first half of that game against Boise State. So everybody's like, whoa, what's going on here? His, his guy punches a guy. He has the guts to suspend his best player after one unsuccessful game, the first time he's ever been a head coach. That was Cliff Harris? Uh, no, no, that was LeGarrette Blanc. Oh, okay. And uh, I, but I think that took amazing guts to stand up, you know, your biggest star. So I think that's going to be an indication. I don't think he's going to back down to people. All right, here's the other question. And, and uh, yesterday in 94 WIP, we're talking to Brian Dawkins and Ray Dittinger, an NFL, right. he's a pro football Hall of Famer, and they were wondering about the vertical passing game. And Ray said, goodness knows, I'm a guy who wants to run the ball. Yeah. But I'm concerned that he has got no downfield threat in his play calling, that the, the passes are all designed to be shorter. And then Brian Dawkins came on and said, if you're a defense and you know that you just have to guard against, you know, 20 yards and right. you don't have to worry about what's right. behind you, that makes you a way more effective defense. So right. what do you say about that? What would he well, say about Oregon, that? Well, in Oregon he didn't as much because I think he didn't have a Deshaun Jackson or somebody like that on his roster. I mean, one of his philosophies is you, everything starts with the players. That's why I think he's going to be effective adapting. You don't come in with a play. He's like, what players do I have? What skills do I have? How can I deploy those skills out on the field? So he's got people who can go deep. And like you say, that's a bigger part of the game here. Clearly, we're going to see more running. He ran two to one against pass at Oregon. He's obviously not going to do that. Uh, He does tend to do more of the middle passes. But he also, whatever you think he's going to do, he's going to do a play against it to get you off guard. Mm-hmm. Why did you want to write this book? What was, it, what was important that, uh, about it that you wanted uh, I've been to fascinated with the guy for years. And, uh, you know, then uh, he, he left Oregon. We were kind of sad about that. Uh, and, uh, frankly, I've been trying to make it as a freelance writer for years. And uh, my wife is always like, why are you always following the ducks and reading? Why don't you work? You know, why don't you do some work? And then uh, he went to the Eagles, and I realized, oh, my God, I have been working all this time. I've been doing research on this book. <laughs> The, the book was not there. It needed to exist, and so now it does. Yeah, but, he, he ref, I'm sorry, John. He yeah. refused an interview for this book. There's yeah. no qu- Chip Kelly quotes as in far the, as the I book. know, he so has good never given. As far as I know, <laughs> he has never given a personal interview about his life or his philosophy in his entire career. I mean, people like uh, uh, Rob Mosley, who's the dean of the Oregon Ducks Reporting Corps. No, sorry, don't got time. Yeah, right. well, well, what's the expectation for the Oregon community uh, for Chip Kelly? Because just the fact that you're here and you're, right. you wrote a book about him and, and now you're covering the Eagles would, would suggest to me that he is a huge figure oh, yeah. in Oregon. So oh, yeah. what makes him successful at, at the Eagles level? I mean, for, for this book to uh, continue the idea of Chip Kelly as this, this football mastermind, what needs to happen? Well, uh, for one thing, I, a thing I find fascinating about him is he does not pitch himself as a mastermind. He is a student of football. He's got a fascinating combination of, of confidence. Clearly, low self-esteem is not an issue for him. But uh, there's a surprising amount of humility, which I go into a bit in the book. He gives a lot of power to his assistant coaches. He gives a lot of power to his players to make decisions on the field. He's not a my way or the highway kind of guy. So uh, that's part of the fascination with him. Uh, he's always surprising you, and yet it's very rock-solid football. It's a lot of smashing it down your throat. So players coach? A lot of people said Andy Reid yeah. was a players coach. He, he, is it, it was part of his and downfall, And I'm no expert on, on Andy Reid, but I have read stuff where people saying they were afraid to tiptoe past Andy Reid's office because he'd get into a discussion about, you know, how you're going to run things. 
Chip Kelly will listen to anybody if you have a good idea about how the team should be run. He's not threatened by it. He's confident. If you got an idea, he'll probably try it in practice. If it works, he'll probably try it. All right, quickly, because I want to get into yeah. your stand-up real fast. But, but give us a record for the Eagles, knowing what you know now, now that you're covering for FishDuck.com. Yeah. Covering but Chip I, Kelly. I have to admit, I, I did not follow the Eagles until they hired Chip. I became a fan on January 16th. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say, uh, you know, it's going to be close to break even. I would think realistically, probably take a year. You're not going to have the ideal quarterback. Uh, that's what I'd say, you know, give or take two games, break even. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking to Mark Saltbeit, who has authored this book, The Dow of Chip Kelly, Lessons from America's Most Successful Coach. He's playing Helium Comedy Club <laughs> tonight and Wednesday. <laughs> and you, also book signings. Yeah. You'll be at the uh, Spiral Bookcase in Maniunk, and then uh, Friday, right. 6 o'clock, Doylestown yeah. Bookshop. Uh, you got any examples of your comedy? Uh, no. <laughs> you know, it, it, every comic will tell you when people say, do a joke. Do a it, joke. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> Play us Set out. up a stage and fill a club, and we'll do it. Mark Ann shoots water from a flower sometimes. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That's all I got. Mark, best of luck with the book. Thank Mark you very Salfite, much. Authoring the Dowel of Chip Kelly and its lessons from America's most successful coach. And he's at Helium tonight and tomorrow night. Book signings in the area. We thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. We'll take another time out. Last chance to vote for what we talk about in our wild card segment. You want to hear more about the Blackhawks' second Stanley Cup in four years? Or a discussion about whether the Sixers should give center Andrew Bynum one more chance to help the team? Do you want that? Bynum style. Results coming up in 90 seconds.